Story Time at Home, presented by the Cincinnati and Hamilton County Public Library. Hello friends, I'm Miss Clarity, and today I'm going to be reading Hedy Lamar's Double Life, which is written by Lori Walmark and illustrated by Katie Wu. Hedy Lamar led a double life. The public knew her as a glamorous movie star, famous throughout the world, but in private, Hetty was a brilliant inventor, a fact known only to her closest friends. Hetty's greatest invention was the technology known as frequency hopping spread spectrum. This is a scientific breakthrough that helps keep our cell phone messages private and defends our computers from hackers. Without Hetty's revolutionary idea, the electronic devices we use every day would be more open to attack. Cameras flashed. The glamorous movie star stepped out of her limousine and onto the red carpet. Everyone who was anyone in Hollywood was there. The star-studded premiere of her first English-language movie, Algiers, was the social event of 1938. Journalists and photographers crowded around her. If they only knew the story, the true story behind the world's most beautiful woman. People seem to think because I have a pretty face, I'm stupid. I have to work twice as hard as anyone else to convince people I have something resembling a brain. The Hollywood legend had no interest in a glitzy lifestyle. Her passion was science and engineering. Hetty converted her fancy parlor into an inventor's workshop, complete with tools, a drafting table, and many well-thumbed technical books. After a long day of acting, Hetty hurried home to work on her latest invention. Her brain overflowed with idea after idea for useful inventions. Though Hetty never tried to sell any of these inventions, that didn't stop her from working to make her designs the best they could be. Inventions are just easy for me to do. I suppose I just came from a different place. Hetty made a flavor cube that changed plain water into soda. Hetty invented an accordion fold pocket on tissue boxes a new traffic signal. Even as a child in Austria in the early 1920s, Hetty's curious mind wanted to know how things worked. What powered automobiles? Which type of motor worked best in an airplane? How could she improve a machine's design? At age five, Hetty took apart her music box to examine the mechanism. Hetty's father shared her love of science and technology. During their walks around their hometown of Vienna, Austria, they exchanged ideas about anything and everything, from streetcars to printing presses and even the constellations that dotted the night sky. Hetty wanted to understand the science and technology behind them all. My father had encouraged me by telling me to hold fast to my dream and that if I held fast, it would come true. Young Hetty was also crazy about motion pictures. Whenever possible, she sneaked off to a movie theater. Returning home, Hetty reenacted her favorite scenes, playing all the parts herself. She constructed a stage for her dolls underneath her father's desk. There, she performed shows for imaginary audiences. Her dolls starred as fairy tale heroes and villains. For real audiences, Hetty acted in school plays and sang at music festivals. Always dreaming, Hetty wanted to escape into the movies. Soon, she got her chance. All my life, I had loved to play, act, and pretend. Hetty's first job was as a script girl at, at a movie studio in Vienna. When the opportunity came up to be an extra in a movie, Hetty rushed to apply. She won a minor role in a restaurant scene. This bit part, small as it was, gave Hetty her first steps on the road to stardom. Hetty constantly practiced her acting skills. She imitated family, friends, and even people she saw on the street. She mimicked the way people walked and talked. She copied their mannerisms and facial expressions. I acted all the time. I was a little living copybook. I wrote people down on me. Before long, Hetty was cast as the lead in a play. She caught the eye of a very famous Hollywood producer, Louis B. Mayer. Impressed by her talent, he offered her a seven-year movie contract. Hetty left her family behind in Europe and settled in America. After only six months of English lessons, she starred in her first American movie. Mayer thought a glamorous movie star needed a Hollywood name, so Hedwig Eva Maria Kiesler became Hetty Lamar. My face has been my misfortune, a mask I cannot remove. I must live with it, I curse it. 
Hetty went on to star in many well-loved films, including the biblical drama Samson and Delilah and the comedy My Favorite Spy. She acted with some of the most famous movie stars of the time, people like Angela Lansbury, Jimmy Stewart, Judy Garland, and Clark Gable. Hetty was now a major movie star. The brains of people are more interesting than the looks, I think. Hetty's movies let people escape the talk of war, if only for a few hours. World War II was raging and everyone was afraid. Nazis had taken over Germany and Nazi soldiers had invaded many other European countries. At a friend's dinner party, Hetty met George Antiel, a composer of modern music. She learned he was also a former weapons inspector. This reminded Hetty of a discussion she had overheard back in Europe about a problem with the guidance system for torpedoes. The guidance system couldn't prevent the enemy from jamming the weapon's radio signals. Because of this, the enemy could command a torpedo to go off course. That would be disastrous. Hetty asked George if the United States Navy faced a similar problem with their torpedoes. They did. Hope and curiosity about the future seemed better than guarantees. That's the way I was. The two inventors decided to combine their talents and figure out a solution to the problem. During breaks from inventing, they challenged each other with games on the piano. George's hands hopped quickly from piano key to piano key. Hetty's hands flew across the keyboard, matching him note for note in a different octave. With every different key she pressed, a piano wire quickly moved back and forth. The speed of the wire's movement, or its frequency, produced the correct note for that key. Hetty realized that even though the notes were constantly changing, she and George could still play the same tune. All she had to do was match the note's frequencies. This gave her an idea, the idea to build a secure torpedo guidance system. Hey look, we're talking to each other and we're changing all the time. In the early 1940s, these guidance systems worked like a walkie-talkie, a two-way radio. In order for walkie-talkies to communicate, both handsets must be tuned to the same frequency. Like strings in a piano, radio waves between pairs of walkie-talkies have unique frequencies. A pair of walkie-talkies can only communicate when they are set to the same frequency. Torpedo guidance systems used to work like that. The equipment on a ship launching a torpedo and the torpedo itself needed to be set to the same frequency. If the enemy figured out what that frequency was, they could cause trouble. Hetty proposed an improved system, one that worked as if it contained several pairs of walkie-talkies. Each pair would be set to a unique frequency. From moment to moment, the system could switch which pair of walkie-talkies carried the message. The idea just came to me. I never thought of such a thing before and probably never shall again. Hetty's system didn't actually contain numerous walkie-talkies. Instead, it used a single device that could quickly change frequencies. As long as the device on the ship and the one on the torpedo were tuned to the same frequency at the same time, they could communicate. Hetty called her discovery the hopping of frequencies. Hetty and George spent night after night brainstorming ways to implement her idea. Frequency hopping was the most important part of the guidance system they developed. Even if the enemy managed to overhear part of the message, it didn't matter. The device had already hopped to a new frequency. Unless the enemy knew the frequency being used at an exact moment, they couldn't interfere with the message. I explained the basics of the idea, and the implementation part came from George. Hetty and George added another security feature to their system. It broke messages into pieces and sent them in short bursts. These were so short, the enemy might not even realize a message had been sent. Hetty and George shared their idea with the National Inventors Council, the group that evaluated discoveries for possible military use. The council told them their idea had great potential value and was red hot. All creative people want to do the unexpected. Their system still needed to be automated so it could work without a human at the controls. There had to be some way of making sure that both devices used the same frequency at the same time. Without this, the system would be useless. Hetty remembered George had once arranged for 16 player pianos to play at the same time. Moving rolls of paper with holes punched in them told the pianos which notes to play and when. In Hetty and George's invention, matching rolls of ribbon on the ship and the torpedo controlled the system. 
the hole signaled which frequency the system should use at that time. That allowed the transmitter and receiver to change frequencies simultaneously. Improving things comes naturally to me. After months and months of hard work, Hetty and George finished their secret communication system. They wrote a detailed description of the design and filled out an application for a patent. If the patent was approved, no one could steal Hetty and George's idea. They sent their patent application to the government. Then they waited and waited and waited. Do good anyway. Think big anyway. Build anyway. More than a year later, on August 11th, 1942, they received their patent. Frequency hopping, their technology-changing invention, was ready to share with the world. They immediately handed both the idea and the patent to the United States Navy. Hetty was proud of her frequency hopping idea might help America win the war. Unfortunately, the Navy had neither the time nor the money to implement a new system during wartime. They refused to develop Hetty and George's invention. Even worse, they classified the technology as secret. This prevented anyone, including the inventors, from using it. We were now at war, and a terrible time it was. Hetty looked for another way to help her adopted country feed the hated Nazis. She realized she could use her celebrity to raise money by selling war bonds. Hetty traveled cross-country and held sales rallies. She sold $25 million worth of war bonds. I'm here to help win the war. Hetty also volunteered at the Hollywood Canteen, a club for American servicemen soon to be sent into battle. To lift their spirits, she chatted and danced with them. By the end of each evening, her feet were sore, but she was happy to have helped the soldiers and sailors. No matter the job that needed to be done, the famous movie star was first in line to lend a hand. She even washed dishes. Friday nights at the canteen became Hetty Lamar night. When Hetty wasn't busy volunteering or acting, she continued to tinker in her inventor's workshop. More than 20 movies later, Hetty retired from acting. 40 years later, the military finally declassified Hetty's frequency hopping technology. The patent had long since expired, so anyone was now free to use this invention. They didn't need to give Hetty or George the credit for their amazing discovery. Companies race to include frequency hopping in their own devices. This technology can be found inside many of today's most popular electronics. Frequency hopping spread spectrum is the technology that helps keep cell phone calls and texts private. It's the trick that allows secure wireless communications between computers and the internet, and it makes harder for people to attack drone aircraft. All this was made possible by Hetty's idea, the hopping of frequencies. I can't understand why there's no acknowledgement when it's used all over the world. Never a letter, never a thank you, never money. It wasn't until more than 50 years after their patent was granted that the world recognized the contributions of Hedy Lamarr and George Antille. In 1997, the inventors received the Pioneer Award from the Electric Frontier Foundation for their significant contribution to computers. Hetty's response to this great honor? It's about time. My life was full of colors, full of life. I don't regret anything, and I learned a lot. Hope you enjoyed this awesome story of a fantastic woman in history and Hollywood legend. Thanks for joining me. Get free books in the mail. Sign up today. Go to Ohio Imagination Library. Org to find out more.